So what is the arterial supply of the duodenum? Here we've already studied that before the opening of the bile duct, the duodenum is a derivative of the foregut, which means it has to be supplied by the celiac trunk, which means the celiac trunk gives a branch, the common hepatic artery, which becomes the proper hepatic. And celiac trunk gives this branch through its proper hepatic artery, the gastroduodenal artery. If you remember, it was lying posterior to the first part. This gastroduodenal artery, this along with its branch called the superior pancreaticoduodenal artery, gives supply to the duodenum before the opening of the bile duct. And the superior mesenteric artery, as you can see here, there's a superior mesenteric artery coming from the aorta. This superior mesenteric artery, because post after the opening of the bile duct, uh, the duodenum is supplied by the midgut derivative blood supply, which is the superior mesenteric artery, gives a branch called the inferior pancreaticoduodenal artery. And this supplies the rest of the duodenum along with the pancreas, obviously, head of the pancreas, right? So these two arteries, these all lie in the C, within the C shape, within the curve of the duodenum. So let's suppose this is the duodenum, the superior pancreatic or duodenal along with gastroduodenal giving supply to this part, and then inferior coming from inferior side, and these two anastomos with each other and supply pancreas as well as the duodenum. Apart from that, the lymphatic drainage is mostly in the pancreatic or duodenal lymph nodes, similar to the name of the artery, and the superior mesenteric lymph nodes. These two lymph nodes eventually drain into the hepatic nodes and end up in the celiac nodes, after which they end up in the cisterna chylae. All right. So then we have the nerve supply. The nerve supply of the duodenum is T9 to T10 sympathetic segments, and the vagus nerve gives it parasympathetic supply. Always remember in the entire small intestine, the sympathetic system is inhibitory to the musculature. Parasympathetic makes the peristalsis happen. It helps with the secretion. So this is very important. We've already studied this in the stomach. Now let's talk about the suspensory muscle of the duodenum or ligament of treats. All right, you can call it anything. T-R-E-I-T-Z. So basically what happens is your third part of the duodenum, your fourth part of the duodenum, and the duodenogeogenal flexure, all three of these have a band, a fibromuscular band attached to them. Where does this band come from? This fibromuscular band arises from the diaphragm, the right crust of the diaphragm. Let me just show you here. So from the right crust of the diaphragm, all the way from there, this band goes down and it arises to the right side of esophagus. This is better. So the right crust of diaphragm, so you can see this is the esophagus and then your stomach begins, right? And right behind this part, the right crust of diaphragm is lying. From the right side of the esophagus, originating from the right crust of the diaphragm, this ligament runs downwards, all right? All the way down, and then it goes. So this is the duodenum, right? And this is the pancreas. This ligament runs downwards posterior to the pancreas and goes ahead and attaches to the third part, fourth part and the duodenogeogenal flexure. And what is the purpose of this ligament that is coming all the way from above? It is to suspend this part. Why? Whenever this ligament contracts, the duodenogeogenal flexure will open. The angle of DJ junction will open, which means it will allow the passage of food. Right. So according to the usage, according to uh, the requirement, when food has to be passed towards your next part of the small intestine, this ligament usually contracts to allow this junction to be opened and the food to proceed forward. That is the major function of this ligament. However, in some cases, this ligament is attached only to the duodenogeogenal flexure, not to the third and fourth parts. So what consequence can occur due to this? Now this time, when the ligament will contract, rather than opening up the angle, it will cause the angle to narrow. And this causes obstruction of food within the intestine. So partial obstruction, you can see still some is going, but still it's quite obstructed to an extent. So this partial obstruction can cause a lot of pain. So that is one reason why the obstruction can occur. That's all you needed to know about the duodenum. So I really hope you understood today's video. Do not forget to hit that subscribe button. Thank you so much for watching.